Hello. Today we're going to do section 1.7, uh, linear independence. But before we do that, let me do a quick review. Um, so we know how, how to represent a system of linear equations. Um, let's say Here's a system of linear equations. We can represent the system of linear equations as a vector equation where we say um, this is the same as x1 v1 plus x2 v2 plus x3 v3 equals b where v one equals a one c one d one v two equals a two c two d two a three c three d three for v three and b equals b one v two b three. We've also learned that this is the same as the equation AX equals B, where A is the coefficient matrix And B is the vector here. And we've learned that all of these ways, you, you find the solution basically the same way for all of these uh, uh, equivalent definitions for a system of linear equations. And the way we use it is by using, an, the way we solve it is by using an augmented matrix. So this is still again all review. OK. All right, so now I want to define what a homogeneous system is. And a homogeneous system of linear equations is a set of equations which all equal 0. OK, now notice something that a homogeneous system is always consistent. Because I can always say x equals 0, 0, 0. So x1 equals 0, x2 equals 0, and x3 equals 0. OK, if I plug this in for all of these equations, all three of these equations, both sides will be zero for all three of them, right? So for a homogeneous system, a system where you have all zeros, 
uh, on the right side of the system of equations. Um, they all are consistent because they all have this solution here, at least one solution, uh, and this is called the trivial solution. OK, so a homogeneous system can either have one solution or infinitely many solutions. OK. And how we would represent a homogeneous system with a vector equation is this way and with the matrix equation is this way where we have zeros here. And with an augmented matrix with just zeros here. Okay. So now we can begin section 1.7 and talk about linear independence. So we saw for two vectors, v1 and v2, let's say, we saw that the span If the two vectors are on the same line, so this is V1, let's say, and let's say this is V2, <coughs> excuse me, then the span, which means the set of all linear combinations of V1 and V2, would be a line. Okay? And if they are on the same line, then they would be a multiple of each other. Okay? If they are not a multiple of each other, then we would have that the vectors are not on the same line. So maybe this would be V1 and this would be V2. Well, then the set of all linear combinations of V1 and V2 would make a plane, right? It would make up this entire. Okay, so we want to extend this idea of not being a multiple of one another. Well, it turns out that V1 and V2, the relationship, the more general relationship between them is, is that they are linearly independent. And if they are linearly independent, then this condition here just naturally uh, follows. All right, so let me give a definition and we want to do that because so we we want to define a broader sense for this concept here. Right, why? So that we can apply it to three vectors. We want to know if three vectors are linearly independent uh, so that we know what their span comprises. So let's start with the definition. Let V1 be 1, 2, 3. Let V2 be 4, 5, 6. And V3 is 2, 1, 0. And I want to know Are V1, V2, and V3 linearly independent? Well, I guess we'll start with an ex example, and then we will uh, give the definition. Okay. So V1 and V2 being a multiple of each other, let's go back to the when we only had two vectors.
in this case here, we said that they would be linearly dependent, which essentially means that they lie on the same line. This would be V1, and maybe this would be V2. Okay. Well, in this case, C could be any real number, so it could be a fraction as well, or an irrational number. So basically, I, instead of C, I could have, for example, uh, B over A, right? Which would mean that A times V1 equals B times V2, which means that A V1 minus B V2 would give me the zero vector, right? And in this case, I would have A1, A or I'm sorry, A and B don't necessarily equals zero. Okay. So basically, I can say that these two are linearly dependent if this equation here plus C two B two equals zero. If this has If it has only the trivial solution. I'm sorry, if it has not only the trivial solution, because A and B don't necessarily equal zero. So in this case, if it has more than just the trivial solution. OK, well, that gives me an idea then. This de definition pretty much implies, so this definition of linear dependence pretty much implies that this equation or, or this statement has to be true about this vector equation, that uh, um, if, if this has more than one solution, then these two vectors are linearly dependent. So I can extend that to three dimensions and say or any dimensions at all and say vectors v1 v2 dot 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 to vn are linearly dependent if and it turns out this is an if and only if c1 v1 plus c2 v2 plus dot 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 plus OK, I can say if they have only one solution. So if this vector equation here, we already know that it has one solution, uh, and that solution is C1 equals C2, which equals C3, which equals dot, 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 which equals Cn, which equals 0. If all of these were 0, then yes, we would have zero equals zero. But if this equation also has another solution, then it would have more than one solution. Then these vectors would 
be linearly dependent. So I can say V V2 are, are linearly independent. Linearly independent if and only if This vector equation has only the trivial solution. And the trivial solution is when is uh, C1 equals C2, which equals da 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 Cn, which equals zero. Okay. So essentially we're saying if no way to linearly these vectors to make the zero vector, then the vectors are linearly independent, right? I mean, if, if the only way to linearly combine them is just to multiply them all by zero and then add them up, then yes, they're linearly independent. Okay. So for this example, to solve this, all we need to do is we need to show that this equation, now instead of C, I can use X, for example, X1, V1, plus X2, V2, plus X3, V3. I need to see how many solutions does this have, okay? So basically, can we combine V1, V2, and V3 in more than just one way uh, to make zero? Combining, by combine, I mean um, uh, a linear combination. Okay. So if I want to solve this, all I should do is solve this uh, augmented matrix here, where I have v1 and v3 and then i have x1 x2 x3 or i'm sorry i would have 0 0 0 and i solve for x1 x2 x3 okay so i would have 1 2 3 4 5 6 2 1 0 Zero, zero, zero. And when I solve this, I end up getting one, two, zero, negative three, ne zero, 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 here. So basically, this tells me X three is free. Okay, so this tells me there is there are infinitely many solutions. Okay, so this tells me that that there is more than one solution to x one v one plus x2 v2 plus x3 v3 equals zero. So therefore, v1, v2, and v3 are linearly dependent. Okay, and because there's only one free vector, the span and V3 is a plane. If there were two free variables, it would be a line. And if there were zero free variables, the span for these three vectors 
would actually be any vector in three dimension would be a linear combination of these three vectors. OK, if these three vectors were linearly independent, then I could say that, for, for example, any vector in three dimensions can be represented using a linear combination of v1, v2, v3. So therefore, the span would be the entire 3D space, OK? If they were linearly independent. But because they're linearly dependent and there is exactly one free variable, then the span is a plane. OK. A set of vectors is linearly dependent if and only if at least one of them is a linear combination of the others. Now be careful. All of them don't have to be linear combination of the other linear combinations of the other. OK, in fact. More than one doesn't have to be, but at least one. is a linear combination of the others if the uh, system is linearly dependent. OK. Here's another theorem. If a set of vectors contains more vectors than entries in each vector, then in the set is linearly dependent. For example, if I have V1 is 1, 2, this is two entries. So V1 and V2, they can be linearly dependent or linearly independent. But as soon as I add V3, then these three have to be linearly dependent because there are three three vectors and only two entries in each one. OK, so there are more vectors than entries. So therefore, the three are linearly dependent. Okay. So that ends our discussion with for uh, section 1.7. What you should do is you should do practice problems one and These are important. Practice problems one and two at the end of section 1.7. And I'll po post homework shortly.